Hi, this is Diana with Metal Life. Is this Eric? Yeah. Can you can you give me one second? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Just uh, making something to drink. <laughs> All right. Well, first and foremost, I want to say really thank you so much for doing the interview. Huge fan. I'm going to fangirl a little bit and say this is an honor and a privilege to do this. So thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Um, oh, no worries. Where are you from? Um, I'm out here in Michigan, actually, but Metal Life is in L.A., so we're, we're a little all over the place. Okay. Cool. And, and uh, yeah, yesterday I interviewed Chuck, and so there's a couple of questions I asked him. I am going to ask you just, you know, just to see how the answers differ. He, <laughs> he, he oh, really, they're not going to line up. They won't line up. <laughs> <laughs> no. He had me laughing, so I'm going to assume you'll do the same. So um, the first one he cracked me up on, I asked him what – he thought was the key to Testament's longevity. Jesus, you guys have been around for 33 years. So he told me basically shit he didn't know and that he kind of laid it on you. So Eric, what do you think is the key to Testament's longevity and your ability to stay fresh and revel, you know, relevant in this kind of industry? Um, that I let Chuck get away with murder. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, that's, kind of a funny answer but in a weird, weird way that's kind of true in a, in a weird way um yeah i mean as far as our relationship um i've kind of um let him get away with a lot of stuff i don't fight with him <laughs> i mean he fights with me all the time you know but for some weird reason, I don't yell back at him, and I don't, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't. Right. But you know, he's even told me too when he's drunk, so all year, I'm a prima donna, or puts up with my shirt, and um, <laughs> that's one of the reasons. That's not the main reason. The main reason is Chuck and I have kept this going from from the beginning, and mm -hmm. you know, when everybody abandoned ship and was was yelling that the ship sinking, we kind of went, you know. Well, not really. We're not really sinking. You're just you're done, and we're gonna we're we're fixing the holes and we're back out, casting the sails and they're black sails now. Um, you know we we came back strong with uh with low and demonic. Wasn't like you know anything we had ever done before. I mean, if you listen to Legacy Demonic, totally different trips, but mm -hmm. it gained us so much more respect in the the metal metal community, you know, more in the death black metal, the, the real thrashing, crazy rabid fans embraced us. And it kind of gave us a rebirth again because, you know, we were, we went from when we were a sinking ship, apparently we were, you know, we had returned to serenity on the radio and it was on, you know, all the national radio and we had electric crown and, you know, those are great songs, but mm -hmm. You know, that's not really where our heart was. You know, we were kind of really, really um, compromising. And like every band, you get to a certain level, you know, you, and you're on a major label. It's like, we need a hit. <laughs> right. You know, we, we need a song on the radio. And so, you know, we're willing and able musicians and, and young and, you know, willing to make that happen and of course you kind of get compromised so you start and everybody in the band that isn't a songwriter thinks they're a songwriter and then before you know it you know you're kind of compromised mm -hmm. so um when you're when you're a thrashing band you, you know you, you come from the school of curse of the legions of death and raging waters and disciples of the watch and stuff like that and then you got, you know, people going, hey, can you play Return to Serenity? And you're like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's actually a great song. You know, I love playing it. I love jamming on it. But it's just not, you know, our, our fans are just, you know, you know, they want to get a pit going. Right. So, oh, yeah. But we we definitely do, you know, I'm kind of speaking on both sides of the fence. At the same time, we do enjoy playing you know, there's been times where that those kind of songs are appropriate, especially the legacy. That one really goes over well. Mm -hmm. But I would say just longevity is the being those those two different wearing those two different hats. Um, you know, stepping out of the thrash genre and 
into the more melodic side. We've kind of dabbled on both and, you know, double-edged sword on both of them. But at the same time, it's, you know, kind of helped the band. And then I think after we had another kind of our own, a separate career without the original lineup, you know, falling back into the original lineup gave us a whole nother, you know, in 2007, now it's 2016. It's like a whole nother 10 years of a rebirth, you know, with right. the band. So, and the fact that time just flies, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I mean, next year, 17 will be 30 years. So that's pretty crazy. It's insane to think about it. I mean, you know, when you, as a journalist, when you sit here and you and you start looking back, you know, things to that we could possibly ask you to look at Testament's career is just it's overwhelming sometimes. You guys have done so much. And, you know, your sound has changed, but fans have always known that we could go back to, you know, whatever you've played and we'll love whatever you put out because it's always going to be you, which is it's awesome. You don't get to say that about a lot of bands. But with the new album coming out, well, when it's finished, obviously, what would you describe mm-hmm. then the sound for the new album when it comes out? <laughs> um, you know, we always... Whenever it takes time, the, we always kind of um, it always kind of goes full circle and goes back to you know goes back to the heavy stuff. Um, it seems like when we write fast, you know we're we're more reaching for like hey what's current what's you know we better get a song for the radio you know just that kind of mentality. But I think when we take our time, we get into more epic stuff like um, you know like Danger to the Faithless or you know, Throne of Thorns or um, A Day and a Death, stuff like that where it's just a little bit more epic and more thinking and thrash kind of stuff. Um, the new stuff, you know, usually there's like one thrash song on our record or two, and then you have our, you know, head-banging moderate songs and then a slower song. Um, on this one... I would say more than half the record is thrash. Nice. Which is, you know, faster beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works, you know, this, they're not stepping on each other's toes because they're, they weren't written at the same time in the same time, same, ugh, same time frame. Um, there's riffs that are, I mean, I still got libraries that I'm finding it. You know, when I move, I'm like, wait, 19, you know, I'll be like, wait, 1989, rehearsal with this and I'll put it on I'm like whoa we never used that song (laughs) so you know there's stuff not a lot but I think there's like maybe one or two riffs that are like way old school and then with today's mentality just kind of you know like you know what would I do to it now so and then people you know when I play for people are like man it's so fresh and sounds modern but it's got that old school sound so it's like "Uh uh-huh um it's definitely, I would say, I don't want to compare it to The Gathering, but it's got that ver- that, philosophy, that velocity and mm-hmm. ferocity, that kind of vibe. Awesome. So, yeah. When do you think I mean, it it's might have its, It's going to have, <laughs> it's gonna have, sorry, it's going to have its own sound, I think. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, sorry so, to set you off. Oh, no, no, no worries. Sorry to, to interrupt. <laughs> Um, so Chuck was saying that you guys are going to take some equipment on the tour that's coming up and, and, uh, start working on it there. Do you guys have any roundabout idea when you're hoping it'll be done? Well, see, musically it's done. Um, we just got to get the vocals right. Okay. And, um, I think I'll let you in on a little family secret. I know. Things are a lot different as far as the way we do things now. I mean, we don't have a band per se that we can go, hey, let's, got a great idea. Let's all meet at the studio. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Alex mm-hmm. is in New York, or he's on tour all the time. James right. in San Diego, or he's on tour all the time. Um, Steve DiGiorgio is close to us, but now he's either recording or on tour all the time. So, um, you know, it's it's really kind of musically it's kind of up to me to to create everything on my own and luckily um 
from doing the finishing the last Dragon Lord record, which is almost finished as well, um, I recruited a young drummer named Alex Dent. Um, cool. When I met him, he was 21 or 20, and um, really hit it off with him and jamming really killer together. And he has been kind of my ghost drummer. Um, It's what? Oh, he's been my ghost drummer um, for the Testament record. He's done like six, seven songs with me, helped me uh, put them together. And that's kind of really, really helped me and kind of given me more of an edge, I think. Awesome. Well, I know we're running a little bit short on time here, so I'll just hop into a couple of questions about you. Um, how close are you to either finishing the Dragon Lord album or are you going to be able to complete it this year? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's, uh, I think there's like two songs left to do and it, everything else is finished. Everything's recorded except for there's two vocal songs to do, which has uh, been kind of a chore to get done because of the Testament schedule, but um, it's definitely going to happen and can't wait for it to come out. It's going to be called Dominion. And I would imagine probably the summer or the fall it'll be out, but it'll be turned in pretty shortly. Awesome. Are you going to do any kind of supporting tour or uh, any other <laughs> support for it? Or uh, that you know, I'd, I'd love to. We'll see what uh, what our schedule permits. But um, definitely, definitely some shows when it comes out for sure. Um, I don't know about touring. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But um. Yeah, I mean, this, the, the, the material is awesome. I, I can't wait to get out and play it. So we'll see see what happens. Oh, yeah. we. we I would okay. say get it done, turn it out, turn it in, and see how it how it does. And I, I've told everybody that's played on the project. But, you know, they're like, yeah, we're going to go on tour. I'm like, let's one step at a time and see what happens. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, out of all the interviews that you've done, for God's sakes, you've been doing them for decades. But is there a reoccurring question that you kind of get tired of answering all the time? Um, um, you know, it, not, not so much now. I mean, I think people are being pretty clever with their with their interviews. I know in the beginning, um, the one thing that always bugged us was, you know, people would say, you know, so, you know, you're in this thrash band and thrash is a new type of music. It's probably not going to last that long. It's more of a fad. What are you going to do when thrash ends? <laughs> <laughs> and Damn. that was like, you know, for the first three records that was asked us and I think after you know towards practice and souls of black that they stopped asking that question but in the beginning it was almost like you know it was like a humorous thing like you know this is a lot of fun but when you know when thrash is this style of music isn't popular next year because it's it's definitely a fad you know what are you going to yeah. do with your life <laughs> and it really scared the hell out of us at first like what what it's going to end next year Shit. <laughs> oh my god a lot of people thought that about rap too, you know, they're like, oh, it's just a fabric. Right. We all see how that went. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, well, Eric, thank you so much for the interview. We really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see. I hope to catch your second show in Chicago. So this is going to be awesome. Thank you again. I appreciate your time. No worries. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take it easy. Bye-bye.